Of this great audience, gathered to watch a national athletic championship, few realize the infinite work and attention to detail that has gone into the training of the athletes who will perform before them. The start of the 100-yard sprint. Get to your marks. Set. Watch the tall man third from left. This man is six foot four, an above average height for a sprinter. One of the sprinter's chief dangers is making a false start. Get to your marks. Set. The athlete second from left has beaten the gun. If he does it again, he'll be disqualified. Here we see a recommended technique at the start of the sprint. A light body, strong, supple calves and thighs are assets of a good sprinter. This man is cutting his initial strides too short. Notice that the sprinter runs on the balls of the feet. Let us examine the good starting technique more closely. Left foot in the first hole, six to nine inches behind the line. Under present rules, hands must be behind the line. Fingers splayed outward. The right knee opposite the hollow of the front foot. Spiked shoes set firmly against the back of the holes. As he gets set, the back comes up, body forward, head fairly high, hips perhaps a little higher. The good sprinter doesn't overstride in the first steps and rises gradually until he's covered 20 yards or more. His stride lengthens naturally. Body weight forward. The arms and legs always work in harmony. The arms flexed at about a right angle. This athlete straightens his arms on the backward swings and rolls his shoulders slightly. Both are to be avoided. He hasn't the smooth progression of the previous sprinter. He does, however, rise gradually to the sprinting angle. Here, starting blocks are used. The spiked shoes planted firmly against the supports. Again, note that the hands should be behind the line. piston arm action should be avoided. This man is not stressing the backward swing of the arm sufficiently and his open palms are too tense. The initial strides of this athlete are unbalanced and too short and he becomes erect too soon. These faults can be traced back to the start where the feet are too close together and the hips too high. Watch for these points in this slow motion shot of the 100 yards race. Note that the athletes all have the early forward body crouch. See them straighten up gradually as they get going and lengthen their stride. Same race, normal speed. Now the crowd is ready for a second thrill. 
the 220 yards race. Runners in lanes start to stagger. This gives each man his own running path and ensures that they'll all run the same distance. In the furlong, full sprinting effort must be eased slightly to store up a finishing burst of speed. Same race again. Note the sound technique of the winner third from left. The short stride and poor form of some of the losers. Slow motion helps us to analyze this race better. To re-emphasize, each runner must judge his pace. Change the early sprint to an imperceptible coast, just under full effort for about 70 yards. He must store up that final burst of speed. Probably few spectators realize that the 440 yards is the hardest race of the sprint program. Here is the start. Again, the runners are in lanes, but only for the first furlong, then they break for the inside position. This favors the fast sprinter. This race requires a careful distribution of effort. It needs the speed of the 100 yards and furlong sprinter, plus staying power. Same race, slow motion. There are not enough lanes, so two men are in the outside lane at the left. With the race run in this way, the fast sprinter has a distinct advantage. The slow runners may get boxed in when the field breaks for the inside of the track. Slow motion finish of this hard race. The man on the inside lane, wearing a dark vest, put too much into the beginning of the race, thus failing to distribute his speed properly. He can't match the challenging sprinters on the home straight. And now we see in close-up how a runner, by improper pacing, ties himself up and loses speed. Watch the finishing sprint again, normal speed. 